there are some great, you know, gyms, communities and, 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 and coaches, you know, out there. But there are coaches, I think, that very quickly will disregard exercise or, or concepts on, on, on eating in a healthy way that maybe they don't understand, that doesn't maybe conform to their, their practice, their, you know, lifestyle choice and how they exercise, how they eat. But maybe they don't, they don't kind of haven't experienced those styles of exercise or, 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 or you know, pieces of food advice or, or things like that in their own way. So, so rather than learning about it, they disregard it. And that's, that's the first thing that kind of blows my mind sometimes about coaches. You know, we're guilty of, of making some, some, I guess, bad decisions in terms of how we develop ourselves to help, yeah, clients and, and gym members and things like that. But when you've got somebody who's supposed to teach you about health and fitness, you know, context doesn't really matter here. But if that person isn't willing to learn, I think you have to question anybody who's in a coach's or teacher's role that isn't actively learning as part of their routine, as part of their, you know, their, their, their daily process. So I, I try to surround myself with loads of people that know loads more about certain things than I know, because I get to collaborate with them. I get to learn from them. And then I get to take the bits that I think can help the people that I know, you know, in my network and, and go, okay, maybe that's, that's a really interesting idea. You know, maybe I can learn from that. I think one of the problems, especially for personal trainers, fitness instructors is that very quickly, I mean, like pretty much as soon as you qualify as a personal trainer and you get your certificate, people put you on this pedestal. I remember it like yesterday, I, I qualified in 2007. And as soon as I finished my personal training course, I, I went on holiday and, and told people what I did. I, was, I just started as a personal trainer. And they instantly said, you must be really fit. I was like, well, the course took four months. I mean, there's personal training courses now that take way less time than that. And I was like, I don't feel like I got fitter just because I got a certificate. But so, so straight away, you've got this industry that puts personal trainers on, on a pedestal, you know, and, and as an aspirational figure, I guess, for a lot of people. And so personal trainers go through their, their journey of developing themselves in terms of, you know, their ability to coach, their, their athletic uh, awareness and knowledge around training and nutrition and all these tools that help us hopefully help lots of different types of people. And then they get good at something. And, and I think sometimes when personal trainers get good at something, it's, 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 yeah, it can be the worst thing in the world because it's very hard for coaches to then open up and say, I'm gonna go and learn about something else now to widen my horizons and maybe maybe open up the, the, the type of person that I could coach and help and support in finding a more fun way of improving their health and fitness. So that when they get to that moment of body love, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up because it doesn't work. When they get to that moment, we get to go, hey, try this. You haven't tried this before, come and try this. You might actually really enjoy it. Personal trainers get to that point where they get good at, say, say I get good at powerlifting, you know, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm into my strength training and, and I can lift some huge numbers. And, and then, you know, somebody asks me about calisthenics training and, and a lot of coaches that I've met along the way would disregard it, you know, and they say, yes, then the, 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 that's not an, as an effective a way of developing your strength as powerlifting. You know, and, and we, yeah, we, we just push these things aside when we haven't even necessarily experienced them, you know, and that's, that's bad for our clients. It's bad for us as professionals, but it happens all the time. You know, if, if, you, if you look at coaches, runners, they run lots with their clients and bodybuilders, they do lots of bodybuilding with their clients. And martial artists, they do lots of martial arts based training with with their, their clients and yoga people do lots of yoga with their clients and stretching stuff. And, and I think we definitely need to question sometimes the diversity of skill sets that we're able to offer in, in the sense that if, if we don't make it exciting and, and a process of learning, because learning is addictive, it's, it's what we're best at, you know, adapting. Uh, that's that's evolution, right? If if we don't give that element of excitement and exhilaration through trying something that I didn't think was possible, trying something that I thought was out of reach, 
and then making that accessible and not just making it accessible, achieving it. That's when exercise becomes more than what I think a lot of people think it is because it becomes character building in a way that is, forget the results, forget like, you know, me regularly going to the gym should make me a bit fitter and a bit stronger and, and, and yeah, help me maintain my health and fitness. Forget that. When you take on a challenge, a physical challenge, it builds character in a way that makes you start to feel like you can say, I can do that. You know, because I, I tried that thing before that I thought I couldn't do, and then I did it. So where a lot of people might give up before they even try, that's not me. I'll, I'll try anything. Try hard, try, try often, try everything. That's the rule. Exercise helps people do that. So, so then you've got this, yeah, we've got a shared responsibility physically look after our health and our fitness, but you know, anxiety is like adrenaline that you don't use. You know, how much, how much energy, physical energy do you really use in your everyday work life, school life? You know, probably, probably not enough, you know, with physical things. And you look at exercise, that word, so many adults say exercise and it has a negative connotation to them. You know, like I said, 85% of the population doesn't have a gym membership. You know, there's there's a huge percentage of people that are not regularly active. You know, we're a sedate society always, right? When you say exercise for a dog, you don't think of it as a negative thing. You know, I got to take the dog out for some exercise. Does the dog resent it? No. The dog, you know, you take the dog for a walk. It's social. It's physical. It's rewarding. It it's important, you know? I don't think that there's a dog owner in the world that would suggest that you don't need to walk your dog, you know? So so exercise for dogs is looked at as a positive. Exercise for a lot of people is looked at as a negative. And I, I guess I come back to that idea that a lot of people give up on health and fitness because the narrow range of activities they've explored that have been made available to them. Maybe that's a, a commercial gym with a load of treadmills, fixed path resistance machines, studio classes that I didn't enjoy. What are you supposed to do? You know, I'm gonna go and join a, a, a rugby team or a, a martial arts club or a rock climbing center. Well, I didn't enjoy those things either. You can't give up. You have to keep finding an activity that you enjoy because there is something out there for everybody. If my if my career has taught me anything, I've never failed to find an activity that gets people excited about learning and progressing. And, and that enjoyment from achieving progression in that, that activity that inspired them, essentially, I would love to be able to do that. Cool. I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to find a way, you know? And that's, that's what I spent the last kind of 15 years learning. When you find that thing, what happens? They turn up. They turn up regularly. And if somebody turns up to exercise, to be active regularly, what happens? They get fit, they get healthier. What impact does that have? That, that physical base, right? So if we talk about health and, and the base of my pyramid, the foundation is my physical health, right? What does that impact? That's gonna impact how you fuel your body. Cause you're gonna get to the point where you're going to progress in your chosen activity. You're going to need to fuel your body better. So that's probably going to start with just drinking more water. The amount of people that I meet that are chronically dehydrated is madness. 